Hey guys and a welcome to the Gumboot Garden. Today I wanted to chat with you a bit more extensively on saving your own seeds. Now there are plenty of reasons why you might want to do this yourself, whether it be to save money on next year's seeds or seedlings, if you're looking to become more self-sufficient, or maybe you already have a really large garden and you want to start saving your own seeds to see what new kind of varieties you can get from some cross pollinated seeds, or maybe you heard that they're selling that GMO seed to the public now and you're really not into it and you just want to have a nice seed bank to make sure you can still have some of those natural heirloom seeds. I've been saving seeds a bit more the more I garden. Um, I just keep trying to save new things, whether it be things that um, I'm saving from my garden or if I'm buying a vegetable at the store and just think mm, it'd be kind of cool to, you know, see if I can grow a plant from this. But I just keep these little envelopes that my seeds are mailed in and I put all of my seeds in, oh, in here, this is just like a massive amount of my coriander seeds that I posted the video yesterday on. Um, and I just put them in a plastic baggie. Uh, sometimes I put a little paper towel in there with them and I label the seeds with what they are and then the time that I'm actually saving those, <laughs> which this one actually, I still have listed as February, 2022, but actually it was, I've just been putting them all in the same bag, 22, 23, 24. <laughs> but most of them I do label and separate by year. I have some others in here. So that's just one envelope full that I have. But I also have things like my giant zinnias, my grape seeds that I saved from this year, dahlias from 2022, which I also have <laughs> all of these. I just deadheaded all of my plants and put them out to dry. And I haven't actually gone through and gotten the seeds from them. And that has been a long time. But they are there if I want to use them. Small zinnias, cosmos, calendula, capsicums in here, red scorpion seeds. I got that from the store and we saved those. And they're in the garden growing right now. Um, I'm not sure that they turned out like red scorpions, but they are turning into something. I haven't tasted any yet. They're just starting to turn red now. Loads of parsley, dill seeds that I've saved. Okay, so you're getting the point. There are tons of different things that I have actually saved um, the seeds from, and I've tried to regrow a lot of them. I have fajoas on my deck right now that I grew from store-bought fajoas, and you know, I have heaps of stuff. I even have in this little like post-it note, one of the kids at the tutoring center where I work, he brought in these random flower seeds and gave them to me. <laughs> he told me I could keep them and grow them. I am going to give them a shot in spring, um, but I really don't know what they are. The closest thing I could think of was like a black eyed Susan, but he told me it's not that. <laughs> so I have no idea, but I have heaps of seeds that have been saved and it's really, really simple to get started. The first thing that you want to do when you're saving your seeds is just to make sure that you are grabbing your seeds from a healthy plant, um, a nice looking fruit, to make sure that you're getting like the best genes that you can possible. And as far as storing goes, they're really easy to store. I just store them in plastic baggies and I label them with what they are in the year. And then I put them in a dark, cool spot in my closet to just make sure that they're staying viable and I'm not ruining any of the viability on them. If you're just starting out and you've never tried to save seeds before, I'd say the easiest things that you can try to save are your herb seeds. So I have like my dill, my coriander, um, my parsley, all growing in the garden and you know, as as they are out in the summer sun, they just start to bolt and they produce these beautiful flowers that all of the pollinators really love. So I just let them go. And once they start to dry out, I just rub them between my fingers and set them on the windowsill and let them dry out for a couple days before I put them in my uh, plastic baggie. And it's really that simple. Then when in the springtime, when it comes time to replant these, you know, you just sprinkle a whole bunch and they just sprout like crazy. Some of the other herb seeds that I'm gonna try and save this year would be like my lettuce seeds and my 
fennel. I want to try and grow fennel this year because I really, I've started to put it in my sauce and I love it. I love the taste of fennel. So <laughs> I actually want to save some of the fennel for its seeds for cooking. And, and I'm really excited about that. All herb seeds, they're quite easy. Whether you're storing them in your kitchen cabinet to use for seasoning or in a dark, cool place to store for next year to plant, Either way, it's like really good. Once you've moved on from saving your herbs, I'd say the next easiest thing that you can save are your peas and your beans. Because, you know, your peas and your beans, they're just gonna grow, they're gonna produce heaps. So I know they always, we always get way more beans than we actually need to eat fresh for that summer. So I always tend to freeze a whole bunch so we can eat them throughout the year. But even still, there's always an overabundance of them. So one thing that you can do is let all of these peas and beans keep growing right on the vine, let them fully dry out on the plant, and then pick them. Then they'll be like quite crunchy and you can open them up and the beans inside will be ready to be saved. So again, just on the safe side, I would let them dry out a few more days as I do with all of my seeds. And you know, after a few days, store them just the same way in these plastic baggies. But they're a really easy thing that you can also save. As for anything else like your peppers or your tomatoes, your cucumber, your squash, those things, because they're right in the middle of your fruit and it can be quite wet and juicy and sticky when you're getting through them, you know, that's fun. That's all right. As you're cutting them up to use them for dinner, pull those seeds out and set them to the side and then give them a really thorough rinse off to get that gel bit off on the outside. And again, let them sit for a couple days and then you'll be good to save them as well. And I know sometimes with tomato seeds, you can actually take the tomato seeds and put them in some water, put them on a windowsill for a few days, and then the gel will actually come off. So after a few days, the gel and all the seeds that are bad are going to float to the top, and you can just kind of skim that off and save all of the good seeds that have stayed on the bottom of your jar. Let those dry off again and they'll be all perfect. Now, when you're doing this, the riper fruit that you're using, the higher chance that your seeds are going to be viable. But with that being said, I actually saved seeds from a green pepper and they all grew. So just give it a shot. Honestly, you know, there's no harm in seeing what you can do. There's no harm in just trying to save seeds, trying to regrow them and see if you have success with them. If you're looking to save seeds for, um, to make sure you're getting something, a quality that you don't have to worry about the GMO seeds or you aren't just experimenting, but you want to get something that is going to produce a nice, good fruit, then you want to be a little bit more careful and cautious with saving your seeds because seeds do get cross pollinated. So if you were to have seeds out there and you know, the bees come along, they go from one plant to another plant and they're cross pollinating your, your plants. So it's not going to affect the fruit that you're actually eating that summer. But if you were to save those seeds from that, you might end up with something different. And I know you might think, oh, but I have a large garden. You know, my one tomato variety is here and then way over on the other side of my garden is another variety. Um, they're quite far away from each other, but these travel quite far. You might be surprised. So unless your plants are over a hundred yards or meters away from each other, then there's a really good chance that they're going to be cross pollinated. But even if they are a hundred yards away, it's not guaranteed that you're still going to not get cross pollination there. And you even have to think if your neighbor is growing a different type of variety, then you might end up some, end up with something crossed with their plant. There is a way that we can stop this from happening, but it's a bit more work. If you want to save those seeds that are self-pollinating, like your peppers or your tomatoes, then as you see that flower buds are starting to form on your plants, you're gonna wanna cover them up with a tool or something that won't let the insects in. Once the flower opens up, you're gonna have to go in there and hand pollinate those flowers. Same thing if you have your squash or your 
pumpkins. You'll have to wrap that flower up and hand pollinate that yourself and then cover it back up. And you want to keep it covered until the fruit actually starts to form on that flower and the flower has started to die off. Then you know that there's no chance that another insect is going to come in here and cross pollinate that on the last minute. And once that fruit has started to form, then you can uncover it. You just, when you go to pick that fruit, you save those seeds. If it's a nice, strong fruit, big fruit, and you'll have your seeds for next year that are exactly sa the same as the plant you're currently growing. The only time that that won't happen is if you're taking seeds from hybrid plants. So if you were to buy seeds from a seed company and they're listed as hybrid or F1 something, those are not going to grow true to type. So you need to take from a plant that is an heirloom variety or open pollinated and then you're going to get something that's a bit more um, like what you're looking for. It's not always a bad thing if your seeds are cross pollinating because you might end up with something that's a new color, a new texture, a new taste, and you might actually like that better than your original one that you took it from. Who knows? But those are my tips for saving your seeds and I hope it was really helpful and gives you, you know, a quick overview of saving your own seeds and how easy it can be and just get out there and experiment and start to try it out to start with and then as you learn and grow then you can kind of worry more about whether it's cross-pollinated or whether it's a true to type. I'll catch you in tomorrow's video guys. See you later.